when James Cook sailed the Endeavour from English shores on August 12th, 1768, he and the crew were heading to the South Pacific. It was on that voyage that he ran into the east coast of Australia, but that wasn't the reason for the trip. Like the astronauts of the 20th century, Cook and his men were venturing into uncharted territory. They were on a voyage of discovery. Their mission was to test their latest scientific theories and technology, but their key objective was to document the transit of Venus from Tahiti. The 18th century astronomers believed they could estimate the size of our solar system based on this rare planetary event. But exactly what is the transit of Venus? Darren Osborne from the uh, CSIRO's Double Helix Science Club. Now, surely you can tell us what this uh, transit of Venus is all about. Well, Craig, most people are familiar with a total eclipse of the sun. And that's when you get the moon passing between the Earth and the sun. And this light of the sun is completely blocked out, and it's a magical experience. With a transit of Venus, though, Venus is much further away from the Earth. And so when it moves between the Earth and the sun, you only get this tiny dot moving across the face. Now, we're not supposed to look at the sun directly, so uh, well, exactly how do you observe this? Well, our eyes are very sensitive, much more sensitive than our skin, and we all know that if we go outdoors that we should put on sunscreen and not spend too much time in the sun, and we should never look directly at the sun because it'll do even more damage. So the best way is to look at it on the internet, because there are lots of websites there with images of the sun, or to go to an astronomer who has a special telescope. Transits occur in pairs eight years apart. After the second one, there won't be another pair for 120 years. When Cook was in Tahiti, he was recording details of the second transit of that pair. So there was a bit of pressure on him to get it right. Well, actually, at the time, Cook and his fellow scientists weren't all that confident about the measurements that he took in Tahiti. And it wasn't until more than 100 years later, in 1874, when they took photographs of the transit of Venus, that they were able to confirm that Cook's measurements were actually quite accurate. Wow, so, well, he didn't experience the success uh, of the transit of Venus at the time, but, I mean, he experienced the success of finding the east coast of Australia, right? That's exactly right. In fact, after the transit of Venus, he got to unveil his second orders, and they were to travel to the east coast of Australia. And because of that, we're here today.